Hi, Ryan. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Ryan, for joining in. Um, don't really need to introduce you to the group. Uh, I'm sure you don't need much introduction. Um, uh, also, uh, I just wanted to let you know that you know we've we've been running this choose to lose program uh, for last four weeks, uh, which this program was a combination of many different fitness formats uh, with some guidance around meal planning and things like that. And it's about to end uh, today. Uh, so huge congratulations to everybody who finished, who started and finished the program. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't really want to waste too much time doing talking around things. So I'll just get straight to the straight to the topic. Uh, the thing is, I was I was actually looking at some statistics and uh, it says that every out of everybody who loses weight, um, ninety percent of them gain it back, uh, and which is why I wanted Ryan. You know, uh, I thought it'd be good if we could just talk about how do you make weight loss more sustainable, and how do you actually build a healthy and a happy relationship with nutrition and food. So over to you, Ryan. Rishabh, thanks. Uh, it's been a few uh, months since I've seen you. Uh, for, uh, for everyone, Rishabh comes into the counseling room and we discuss how to sustain a diet, how to sustain the workouts and all. So I think it's uh, to, today's uh, session, I'm going to talk to everyone about um, how your body is a vehicle. And whilst you have a car or you have a house, you can always change that. You can change your job, you can change your cycle, you can change your apartment, you can change your mobile phone, you can change your computer, you can change your service provider. You can't change the human body. So I believe the focus has changed post-COVID by everyone saying that, how do I eat better? How do I treat my body better? So I wanted to, I wanted to share with everyone that everyone feels that diet is something temporary. And I think diet is a very negative term. Uh, we should call it, how do I eat? What is my meal plan or what is my nutrition plan? So uh, I just wanted to share my screen and probably have a, uh, you know, um, a presentation which I made for everyone. Um, let me just get it cracking over here. Uh, Rishab, is my screen sharing? Sorry, I was on mute. I can see this, right? I can yeah, see your screen. Okay, okay, fine. Perfect. Perfect. I'm just waiting for it to load. Oh, oops. My computer hung there. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Huh? Yeah. All right. I've got... Okay, it's not it's not loading on mine. I'm gonna keep it at this mode only. It's not loading on my screen. There's always a technical error in diet and tech. But, but I think this is fine, right? This is fine. Okay, yeah. so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna to talk to everyone about how do you kind of keep your body in check and stuff like that. First things first, okay. I at I, I don't party a lot, Rishabh. Uh, not not because I don't like partying. I'm a goan for everyone out there who's uh, saying hi to Ryan Fernando. But when I go for a party, people will <laughs> ask me, oh, you drink? And then I'm like, is this okay to eat? So I tend to be the person that bursts the balloon when I'm, I'm around a party because people tend to get very uh, you know, cautious about, oh, Ryan's here, what am I going to eat and what am I not going to eat? But over the years, I've been a people watcher and I watch people, they say, oh, I'm following a diet and all. But research is showing that if you slip up by just 150 calories in a day, over the entire year, you add around two kgs. So Rishab, even with you working out so hard and I working out so hard, there will be days that if it slips on the lip, it goes maybe not to the hips, but for the men, it goes to the, the belly. Like I had COVID in April and I gained one and a half kg of fat and it all went around the belly because I stopped working out. I was like, anyway, I, I don't need to follow nutrition. I'm not working out that hard. And you have these sugar cravings when you come out of a sickness. You feel, oh, I'm not well, or I'll start tomorrow. I'll start day after. Everyone goes through this. The experts go through it. 
uh, the, the trainers go through it, the doctors go through it, the nutritionists go through this. We are all human. So we are, we are, uh, we are bound. If we let it slip on the lip, it goes straight to the hip. Now you have to understand in the last 30 years, food has become a new temptation. Like you go back and ask your grandparents, they didn't have so much of variety of processed foods. Like yesterday, I ate four or five pieces of salt and vinegar chips. Okay, they're, they're my favorite. Now, my ancestors would have to cut the potato up and then fry it and then, and they would do it only at breakfast, lunch, dinner. But here you just tear open a packet or swiggy, zomato, you call them up. So everything's instantly available. So I think what I'm trying to communicate to everyone, there's a temptation out there and all of us are sinning. And that's where the weight gain starts. Okay, so this weight gain starts by the mistakes that we make. Now, how do you correct this? The, the, the basics, the first tip of the day I would give you is, it's easier said than done, remove all your e-commerce or those, uh, those apps on your phone, uh, which is the, 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 the Swiggy. I don't know if you've seen the Swiggy ad, Rishabh, where the guy gets the uh, Motichur Laddu that he's, he's not supposed to eat the laddu, right? He's diabetic and then he's showing that he's praying in the cricket match. And, and I think that ease of the uh, food availability is the first place. So those of you who are really struggling, I'd like you to do one thing, delete those apps off your phone. Because that's the first place instant temptation is there. Instant temptation is there for you to... And then people say, Ryan, what should I eat? What should I not eat? I'm like, boss, forget about what you should eat and watch it. Delete the app. Because that instantaneous availability of food, you are going to have the knowledge from the nutritionist of don't eat moti chur laddu. But the app is showing it there. Your finger is going to click. Next thing you know, the guy is at your doorstep 20 minutes later and it's like, Ryan told me not to eat, but I'll start tomorrow. Right? So this is this is very, very important. In fact, Ryan, uh, it's like what you said is exactly the basic behavioral science, right? When the when the behavior is exactly really easy for you to do yeah, and you have something prompting you to do it, you will actually make it happen. So your app, which you, the app which you spoke about is the prompt. Yeah. And it's so convenient because you don't really have to do anything. Just click off a button and you have it. Yeah. And I, I think I think if you if you flip it on what you just said, Rishabh, your app at Cult is so amazing. Flip the app on, do the exercise. Do the exercise. The yeah. difference, the difference between let's say a food delivery app and an exercise app, in the food delivery, there's pleasure. And in a in a fitness app, there's more of pain. So you have to flip a switch in your head psychologically, behaviorally that if I exercise, it's amazing. And, and I'll teach everyone how to do this, okay? Um, let me see if I can show you my body age. I just, I, I'd like to make the session less of a presentation and more, uh, more interactive at the end of the day. Uh, if somebody's doing annotations, if the uh, admin can get that off, please. Sorry, you're looking at my calendar. It's a crazy calendar, but I just want to show you with you about weight and how you have to maintain your weight and stuff like that. So let me just find Ryan Fernando because that's the data that I can show you, which is not confidential. Okay, so I am 40, I'm going to be 47 this November, Rishab. So just want to show you. Uh, so I, I, I put on weight during COVID period over here. Okay, so you can see this nicely gone up 21. And like, shit, damn. So August and I was like, I'm going to start off. So I went down to 21. And now this month, I've come down to 18.9. Uh, but what I want to show people is um, my body age. So if you see my body age right now, let me knock off a few of these. So we can see everything why I want to show people that they should know their weight and their body age and everything, metabolic age, um, is that this is where the nasha starts coming in. So my body age right now, actually, let me knock off a few more. It's got so many men. You should see Rishabh's measurements. I've got like tons of them. Okay. <laughs> my body age right now is 33. That's what uh, good nutrition does to you. And exercise. It's exercise nutrition. No, but here's what I want to share with everyone. I am as much as you in cheating. 
I will go to UB City and have a full sugar coke. I'll have a pizza. I'll do all of that stuff. But I suddenly realized one thing. The moment I see this 33 years of body age and somebody says, damn, you don't look 33. I grab that. I grab that compliment and boom, I put it into my head. Right now, when Rishabh's giving me a workout, I'm like, oh, I can't do another push up. And then suddenly yesterday, what happened in the gym, Rishabh, I got to share this with you. So my trainer put in uh, the, on the leg press machine, he put the, the, the leg, he put the weights and everything. So he said 15 reps, sir. So yesterday, I uh, day before yesterday or so, I'd taken, this was the latest measurement, which was about 5th of October. So you can see that over here, 5th of October. So I was like 33 years of age. So I was like super stoked, 33 years of age. So I reached 15 reps and then I was going 31, 32, 33. So my trainer's looking at me so confused. And every rep in the gym yesterday, after I finished the reps he wanted, I went 31, 32, 33. So I'm coming back full circle. The app in food is pleasure. The app in training is pain. I flipped the switch on that. I used the nasha of a compliment. I lost weight. I look good. I can have better bedroom performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I take those few nashas and I keep it in my head. So when I see that pizza, that burger, that donut, I take out the 33-year-old nasha. No. Nope. When I go to the gym, it's pain. I put 30, so 31, 32. My trainer is completely confused. Why from 15, I go to 31, 32, 33? But I'm reminding myself that I need to work out. So I want everyone to understand that whilst you do these programs with a short term, they are great to establish a contact neuromuscular firing, brain to muscle firing. But I'm going to share a lot of revelations with you, which the fitness industry is not going to tell you, which involves hard work. The nutrition industry will not tell you. It involves discipline. Okay. So the first tip I'm going to give you is I've gained weight. Let me control it by skipping meals. Skipping meals and intermittent fasting are two different things. Don't mix up the two. I had a gentleman the other day. Oh, I'm coming to Bangalore and all. I'm going to have a party and all. And then when I'm going back on the flight, I'm going to skip my dinner. That's not going to control uh, his weight gain. What's going to control his weight gain? Him getting back in the next week, going on to intermittent fasting, working out correctly and losing the one and a half kg that he gained in Bangalore this last week of drinking and eating and being merry more than what his body required. So don't do the skipping meals, and especially goes out to all the ladies, all the teenage girls. You feel that if I skip a meal, I lose weight. When you skip a meal, body receives a signal. Oh, this is famine condition. Ha, ah, famine. Next meal that comes, let's store it as fat. Please understand in 2000 years, our genes haven't evolved. So evolution stress is not getting food equal to famine. Famine equals fat storage. What does that mean? Then Ryan, I should eat. Yes, you should eat. But then do you know your qua? My clinic is called qua nutrition because qua in Latin means incapacity. So when Rishabh came to me, I measured out his height, weight, body fat percentage and the capacity of how much of workout he was doing, took his resting metabolism, built his total energy expenditure and said, Rishabh, you need to eat so much. And I still remember telling him, you got to weigh the food. You got to know how much of rice you should be eating, how much of dal you should be eating. And please understand, none of us have ever been taught to eat out of love and culture. I mean, we've been never no, not been taught to eat out of science. We've been taught to eat out of love and culture. Rishabh's mom, my mom, Rishabh's wife, my wife, people around you, they teach you, they, they teach you or they control you or they give you food based on love and culture. But nobody's ever talking about portion. And there are naysayers. People will say, Hamara zamane mein ye ne kar diya. Lekin tera zamane mein swiggy or zomato nahi tha. Tera zamane mein bike nahi tha. Tera zamane mein uh, lift nahi tha. So th this, this whole perspective is exercise has gotten scientific. Nutrition has gotten scientific. But you have the naysayers, naysayers saying that, Are yaar, we will see tomorrow. And trust me, a lot of diet, uh, doctors come to me for their diet, okay? And, and they, they're doing the diet because they are slowly realizing that if they don't change the way they eat, diabetes, hypertension, blood pressure, arthritis, these are key conditions that inflict people now in their late 40s. Forget 50s and 60s, okay? Uh, don't skip the meal. Uh, irregular eating, over snacking, 
low activity, poor sleep, all affects it. Okay. One thing that you, you all know this, you know that irregularly eating is going to make you put on weight. So first of all, set a time clock. The biggest, you know, when people come to me and they, they do a nutrition plan, the, sometimes for certain people, I don't even give a nutrition plan the first month. I just say, report back to me, what's your eating time? And like, I've come to you, where's my diet plan? I'm like, I don't want any diet plan. Your diet plan is to tell me your time clock period. Because if I cannot understand how you eat or you keep a food diary, then there's no point giving you the right blueprint. So I'll give you a parallel example. Rishabh, let's say you want to build a beautiful building four-story building, five-story building, right? You come to the architect, Ryan Fernando. Ryan Fernando says, you build the building like this. As a contractor, you say, first I'll build a top floor, then I'll build a ground floor. This is what happens when people come for a diet plan. They want the diet plan, but they have not got the blueprint of their life in order. And the simple blueprint, everyone, is sleep on time, Wake up on time and eat on time. No, nahi ho sakta, ye nahi ho sakta. Take it from me. I work with probably the highest number of celebrities in the country. I see very successful people and they are successful because they are disciplined. Uh, so what you need to do is if you feel you are not a disciplined person, start with one thing. If you're irregular eating, then you can either correct the choice of what you're putting in your plate as better and irregular eat or whatever you're eating, just change the timing. Work on that for 30 days. Next 30 days, work on changing the, the, the timing. Next 30 days, change on the portion control. Next 30 days, reduce one meal down. Next 30 days, do a protein in one of the meals. Like this, you can go through a whole year on your own of adjusting everything you do without getting choked up saying that, oh my God, I'm on a diet, right? But if you're exercising, like you did a program with Rishabh, um, you can see results in two weeks, four weeks, which are 30 grams, 50 grams of fat. When people get more than uh, 300 grams of uh, fat in a month, I know they're very disciplined. They're disciplined on the diet. They're disciplined on exercise. They're disciplined on sleep. In fact, sleep is a new diet. So let me share an input with you. I do a lot of analysis of the people's heart rate and sleep cycle. I, I work with some of the best athletes. Now, research shows when you get the rays of the sun, from, uh, from five o'clock in the evening, the red color of the sun releases melatonin. Melatonin gets released. Melatonin tells your body to sleep. Now, melatonin starts releasing by 7.38. But you're with blue light till about 9.30, 10, 11, 12, 1. So by 12 o'clock, if melatonin is released by eight o'clock, the brain has already told the liver, start detoxing. Liver saying, hey, by detoxing? chicken biryani khaya stomach liver digestion then digestion goes to intestine intestine salam saab me to passport officer de do ye kahan se aa gaya ha ab to mutton hai ha theek hai theek hai wahan jao digestion 6 ghanta so now liver saying hey boss i need to sleep. i need to i need to detox i need to detox Next thing you know, the liver is not detoxed. It starts detox at 4 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're getting up for your class. So I can't stress upon you that people who get more number of hours before midnight are the ones who are going to lose weight. Take it from me. I, I, I cannot stay awake. I just cannot. Right. In fact, I'll... Uh, so on that note, I'll tell you from my personal experience that... There have been, and you know this, that, you know, there are times when I try to bulk and try to get, you know, build more muscle mass, etc. And that's when I'm eating a lot of food. Uh, <clears throat> and I, what I've realized is that when I'm eating too much, which also means that to eat that many calories, I'm sometimes pushing, you know, beyond the boundaries of that eating, you know, time restricted eating that we generally follow. And when I do that, my even after eating so much food, because I'm eating closer to bedtime, my recovery is so much slower. It is really, really slow. And then for me to get more sessions, uh, get more training sessions, become it becomes harder. 
So this is anecdotal, but yeah, uh, I, I'm sure it's, a lot of research it's, it's, also says it's that. It's important. It's important, Rishabh. So when people come to me for a diet plan and say, I'm not losing weight, and, and I'll be honest with everyone, okay? I've got like, so let's say I take 100 clients. I do I do thousands of people with the Quan Nutrition Clinics, okay? And when we look at the data, um, we find out for every 10% of our population, we're not getting a result. So what I'm doing now, Rishabh, is I'm asking people to wear exercise variables. Because there is, a, there is an assumption, one, that I don't overeat. Two, yep. there's an assumption that I sleep on time. <clears throat> Third, Rishabh, and nobody will bell this cat. I'm in the gym, okay? And I watch all the aunties and uncles with due respect, okay? To everyone, I'm 46 years of age. So <laughs> I see youngsters than me and they look like aunties and uncles. And I call them aunties and uncles out of love. Sir, I'm working out in the gym. I'm like, beta, I'm looking at you work out and you're not even burning 100 calories. Matlab, they're on the phone, they're talking, watching TV. Uh, Rishabh is not looking at me. I'll do five repetitions lower and stuff like that. You have to be at that heart rate where you're really, really burning calories. So all of these co come together. And so that's what I tell people that, uh, you know, when I sometimes I get a lot of questions around that I've been very disciplined for so long, but have hit a plateau and not really seeing results and things like that. And what I always tell people is that most of the times people underestimate the amount of food that they're eating and overestimate the amount of workout that they're doing. And that's where, you know, things start to become a little, a little difficult. So totally, again, agree with you that you need to maintain that kind of a heart rate zone, depending on your training stimulus need to sustain the burn if you're trying to build the muscle and all of those things are important done done um just i just want to remove these annotations that are there let's see yeah yeah my son taught me how to do this <laughs> okay so I, this is one thing uh, rishab in in conjunction what you which what you just spoke i've been working out hard but i've not lost weight so I'm sure you're doing this when your physical units are open. Uh, but uh, for everybody, you need to know your weight and it doesn't stop there. All of you who are beginning to learn uh, to do weight training, exercise and all, understand that your weight is divided into fat percentage and muscle percentage. Now look at these three women over here. 54 kgs, 54 kgs, 54 kgs. See, one woman is really smiling in the center. And then one woman is really unhappy, but they're all 54 kgs, all same height, 158 meters. Oh, my BMI is the same BMI is height to weight ratio. But when you do a body fat check, this lady has 31, this lady has 15.8, this lady has 22.6. So check this out. Whilst you assume the so-called fatter lady has got more metabolism, that's wrong. The lady with lesser fat has a highest metabolism, 1, 2, 6, 8. And check out her body age, 25. This lady is 35. This lady is 30. And this is the actual age of the person. So whenever people start a fitness program and they say, I'm not getting result, I ask this question. Have you checked your weight? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not getting result because my weight is same. You may have gone from the same 54.8, 31.5, down to 22.6% fat. So you need to have a weighing scale when you are doing this and it's available probably at, you know, you can walk into the Kwan Nutrition Clinics in, in, in any of the metro cities. You can get in touch with us. Cult, I'm sure they're, they're, your places are open now. And uh, Rishabh, do you all have a ability to measure people's body fat percentage at the cult filled gyms? Yeah, we have a uh, body composition Wonderful. Machine, so if yeah. people have that knowledge of body composition, then you're like, okay, what was I? So like, if, if, if I show you my assessment again, uh, like uh, my, my fat mass, I'm calculating my fat mass. So it's gone down from September 1st, October 6th from 14.01 to 12.5, because I've truly decided to not cheat on my diet, truly decided to work out extra reps. And I was like, let me build my muscle more. So when I have this data, I'm watching my subcutaneous fat. I'm watching out. So if, if you look at it, uh, I'm, I'm, not going any, I'm not going anywhere, but there is small incremental changes which are statistically significant. 
Now, why is this, uh, why is this, uh, what you call that, uh, uh, why is this impo uh, important at the end of the day is because I need to share this information with you. Okay. People say I've lost weight. Now imagine this was Ryan Fernando's fat cells. Okay. And during COVID, I decided to let go of my body and eat a lot of sugar foods and basically I had to recover. So let me get my strength back and all. So the number of fat cells in your body remain the same. But each fat cell increases up very, very, very high. Increases up very, very high. So because it increases up very high, so let's say all of you start on a program and this is a fat cell, it shrinks down. The moment you get off the extra metabolism because of exercise, or you have been on a nutrition plan and you control your calories, the fat cell shrinks. You get off the control of fat cells, the fat cell begins to go up. So there's a yo-yo. This cell goes zook, 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 zook. So the next question is, and everyone would be asking this, I think, how do I get rid of these fat cells? I'm doing Rishabh's exercise. I'm following a nutrition plan and it shrunk out, but I've reached a plateau. You've reached a plateau because these cells can reach a certain level of fat beyond which it won't go down. It will go down. It takes a few years. 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 Huh? I'm talking about years. So I'm intentionally not speaking at this point to have the uh, effect over here. So all the 224 participants, your fat cells reside in your body for 8.4 years. So what sins you committed when you are in a software company, what sins you committed when you and your wife got married uh, in terms of you went on a honeymoon to Goa and then you gorged yourself. Oh, it's so lovely. Then you four years in a row, you went here, you went there. And before you know it, oh, Ryan Fernando, I put on 10 kgs of weight. Yeah, my wife also put on 15 kgs of weight. And then women, you have your children. Like, you know what? I, I'll have the first child. I'm too busy with the kid. No time for my workout. No time for my body. I let go. Then you have the second child. You let go. Next thing you know, you're 30 kgs overweight. Now, these cells have gone into megablastic size. Now, you start working out, they'll come down to a certain size, but they don't disappear. They take 8.4 years, and that's what I tell people. You have to be in an active lifestyle mode, active diet mode for 8.4 years. So when this cell dies off, it need not necessarily be replaced. Right? Uh, and so it's, it's really, really, uh, you know, what you need to do. And if you, if you are a fan of Russell Peter, somebody is going to get really hurt bad. <laughs> so somebody is going to get really fat really soon. Okay. So the point over here is that <clears throat> we are fat because we don't move enough in the current culture. We are fat because in the history of mankind, we have never had so much access to food at the press of a button when we want, how much we want. And we are fat because we have higher ratio of stress because we're constantly working, thinking, so our heart rates are higher, cortisol is more. And we are finally fat because I, I believe we are not sleeping enough. So these are the causative agents. One quick, quick tip that I'm going to give you. Research is showing that if you're walking, weightlifting, you're doing yoga, you're burning more amount of fat than carbohydrate. These are two batteries. So when you do high intensity, you're burning more of carbs. But when you're in low intensity, so I want to convince people, in addition to doing the one hour of cult session, can you start doing work in your house? People have stopped doing work. We all have servants. Most of us have servants. Right In the lockdown, I'm sure every one of us have lost weight because we have had to mop our houses or jado our houses. I lost weight. You know how to mop, mop my house, Rishabh? Take a huge bath towel, throw it on the floor. Obviously, it's wet, okay? Squeezed. I'll keep it open. One leg here, one leg here. And then I'd, I'd, go, I'd go shuffling around the whole house like lunges style. Man, your glutes really hurt. At the end of it, I would be dripping, but the 
the three bedroom house would be and you know when you get in the corners you know you take one leg forward then you put it on the back <laughs> leg then the other leg forward in that corner and that was a workout so there's a and and there's something and rishab you must have heard of this is called neat okay non exercise adaptive thermogenics so when you don't do exercise what could you do at home okay i know people are waiting for the diet part and all so let me get there quickly but this uh, before we get to that line i think what you just spoke is really really important and that's when people are looking at there and there are many questions that i already see how do i lose fat from my abdominal area and things like that and sometimes i see <clears throat> that people are getting 90 minutes of hard exercise sessions pretty much four or five days a week and my advice generally to them is if you could reduce that from 90 to you know 45 50 or 60 and include some walk throughout the day that's just going to make a hell lot of a difference huge and difference if, if you would remember ryan when i started working with you on my nutrition uh walk was one important part of you know my every day every day i obviously i was training lifting weights which i still do every day uh, but walk uh, what you did was you increased my the amount of you know, even walk leisure walk that i was doing yeah. and if i remember it right i dropped about 4% body fat in a month in the first month of working with you and i would say walk had to do everything else remaining the same what i changed was so by by everything else remaining the same i mean i was still lifting heavy weights but what i changed was my nutrition uh, which which obviously fixed a lot of things in my gut by the way not just my body composition um, so i started falling sick much lesser uh, with that i also increased my leisure walks so more than something about 15000 steps a day and huge huge difference when it comes to fat deposit in the abdomen so yeah that's the answer for some questions that we've already received okay uh, awesome rishab uh, it's great that you're sharing that insight many 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 fitness experts um don't want to share this fact about walking because they're very scared that people will only do walking and then not join your cult fit right and, and i i think it's important for me to return that um, compliment to you which is whilst you need to walk three times a week you have to do resistance training correct muscle is the only age reversible organ i'm deviating in my presentation i mean i love this format um everyone you'll haven't seen my screen saver okay you don't you all don't know this guy uh it's, it's supposed to be confidential actually so uh, where is my exercise one yeah i want to show everyone um uh, this which i show everyone in a counseling now if you're not paying attention uh, please watch in closely uh, uh, rishab is this mri visible on your screen yeah i can see yeah this. so this is the mri of the quadricep muscle this center part is the bone over here okay and that you can see the whole thigh over here okay now this solid uh, dark gray part is like your mutton your leg muscle and this white 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 is your subcutaneous fat the center here is the bone i want to show you something on a 40 year old triathlete so rishab this is you this is you okay this is you with all the solid muscle your little bit of fat and the bone in the center this is a 74 year old sedentary man can you see the muscle deteriorated yeah and Huge can you see the fat yep right this is why this is why when indians travel abroad we are the number one to ask for wheelchair we don't do any exercise no strength training 70 year old triathlete mri muscle is the only age reversible organ all of you 230 participants if rishab or me cannot give you anything in your life just remember this one thing the more you train and train correctly train under guided trainers train with the proper biomechanics and that's what i just told um, i told shwetambri the other day she's like so what are you doing what 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 did you do blah blah we were just chatting like so i was just telling her that um, you know i didn't buy a new car this year so my car is 8 years old rishab and i was like 8 years old everyone says change your car even my ca is telling me sir you'll get depreciation change your car and i'm like okay fine you know what if i change my car 
I'm still going to buy it on EMI and I'll, I'll upgrade my car. Probably my EMI will be about 40, 50,000 rupees a month. And then I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? Let's spend all of that on a trainer. Let's spend it on a Masio. Let's spend it on a yoga instructor. I've actually taken a nutritionist in my own company because I cheat myself. But when I have a nutritionist, I'm meeting her once a month. I'm like, yeah, you know, I had salt and vinegar chips yesterday. I told you not to eat it. Yeah, but what to do? I got sugar craving. Did you take a magnesium capsule? Yeah, I took my magnesium. But you know what it is? No, all my life I like to, I like to snack. I got the snacking gene in me. So she's like, why don't you cut some cucumbers? Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot about cut cucumbers. Okay, put cut cucumbers. You need to invest in training and your body's requirement. It's not like some naam ke vaste. Forgive me if I say this, but I, I don't know if I'm going to offend any people, but all of us know, we pray to God naam ke vaste. Hey, dear Lord, please, please give me a lot of money. Please give me good clients. Please make uh, Rajnikan come as my dear. Do, do, do. Five minute prayer, then we go. I do five minutes to God in 24 days and I expect him to give me so much. And most of us pray that way. Most of us exercise that way. Most of us do our diet that way. There's no, there's no, like, you see a pujari, you see a priest, proper regimen. You see Rishabh, proper regimen. You see me as a nutritionist, proper regimen on diet, maybe not on exercise. So the profession demands that. For all of us who are arm admis, you need to get a little bit of regimen in your diet and your, your exercise. And this slide was just to convince you that muscle is the only. So women, women, I, I, when I showed this to my wife, Rishabh, I was just looking, she's married to me now for about 12 years. Okay, she's 45. She is fitter and looks younger than when I married her, right? And we, we're comparing data of her muscle then and her muscle now. So after she's had my our son, She's actually got more muscle mass. And this is one slide that has motivated her. That muscle is the only age reversible organ. Right? And it's evident when you work out, your body age is 46, but you're a 33 year old. So you've got to work out. And by the way, this is 10 years of workout. This is not yeah. 10, 10 weeks of workout. So we're trying to convince people that from today till the last breath on the planet, you're focused on exercising. You're learning the sign. You're not being stupid and asking, I did not lose weight. You're asking, what do I need to do to sustain this weight loss? I got 20 grams this month. I'm going to get 30 grams next month. By the way, if somebody gives me 900 grams of weight, fat loss in a month, you're a rock star. 900 grams of fat loss in a month, you're a rock star. Uh, the only guy that has got more than that, I've, the highest I've ever got is four kgs. Uh, Rishabh, how much did you get in the first month? You, do you remember how much fat you lost? Was it about two kgs or three kgs? It was... Uh, or lesser? At a, at a 75 kg weight. Um, I think it was about a, a one and a half kg fat loss in the first month. It was, um, it was about yeah, one and a half, two kgs. Fat loss in the month. In, in Virat the got month. four and a half kgs in the first month. Wow. Because his diet was completely jacked. So we just aligned wow. that and he worked out like amazingly. Okay. Coming back, uh, we are going, um, we are going, getting into mindful eating. So I do was, know. Uh, so uh, that actually the previous slide, the, the uh, muscle and fat. Yes. Yes. And I think that was a really good explanation. And I can actually see some, uh, some messages talking about how, simple this explanation and useful this explanation is and there was another question that i saw about uh, my metabolism is low and things like that so i think this was the answer to that question itself because, metabolism is low yeah. when you have smaller muscle mass exactly which is why when people invest in a training program there are so many things you can do in exercise. You can play games, you can do yoga, you can do strength training, you can do CrossFit, you can do Pilates, you can do yoga. There's so much you can do, but, and therefore you should spend a lifetime of exploring each one of them. And, and, and trust me, I'm exploring yoga twice a week and I have fallen in love with it. My weight training has actually improved in the gym. Just because I've, my, my yoga instructor says, breathe only through your nose. So I'm breathing the gym like that when I'm running the treadmill. My trainers look at me, sir, what happened? You're 31, 32, 33 or SASP. I'm not telling him anything because he's been my trainer for 11 years. 
I say something to him. He's like, no, sir, you do like this. You do like that. I'm like very happy. Yes. No, no, no. This is what I want to do. Uh, so discover your own journey. At some point, your trainer becomes an enabler and your wingman. Uh, before that, when you don't know anything, your trainer, your nutritionist becomes your guru, your guide, your coach. Okay. Uh, and coming, there, are, there are some questions on... Shall we take the questions, uh, Rishabh? Because I, think, I just... I I, I, just the, yeah, I just have the. I just have the. I just have a few foods that I would tell people. See, I can't give anyone a diet because people ask, tell me the ideal diet. There's no ideal diet. If there was an ideal diet, ladies and gentlemen, as Amir Khan's nutritionist, Abhishek Bachchan's nutritionist, Fardin Khan's nutritionist, Virat Kohli's nutritionist, Rohit Sharma's nutritionist, every freaking film star out there has taken a diet plan for me. I would have made a book and given the book and made a lot of money. But the fact of the matter is, it's bio individual. There's something called genetics. There's something called the microbiome. There's something called food allergy test. I made Rishabh do all of these things. And then I specifically designed which foods work for him. So whilst I give him one food and it'll cause him muscle gain, that same food for me may cause fat gain. But there are a few foods that really help in fat burning Rishabh. And I remember that I gave you some of these foods. Yeah. Apple. Any lady who's feeling hungry, Zomato, Zomato Swiggy, remove it off your phone. Keep an apple in your bag. Watermelon, the white of watermelon contains citrulline malate. So when you're working out hard with Rishab, have the watermelon with the white part also. It contains uh, citrulline, which helps in fat loss. Uh, carrots, excellent source of snacking. IPL is on. Cut carrots, no salt and vinegar chips. Put salt and vinegar, apple cider vinegar and salt, and then dip your carrots and cucumbers in that and eat it during your match. Cucumbers are very good. I use cinnamon and cinnamon capsules, Rishabh, for fat burning as a natural source of fat burner. Again, whilst I'm giving this advice in a recorded session, I have to give a public disclaimer that no one size fits all. The foods I'm recommending can cause a food allergy in you. Supplements that I'm recommending could be detrimental to your liver and kidney. So please do not take my verbal general advice in a session like this as the holy grail of what you could do and just do a trial and error method and probably get a result. The biggest mistake everybody does, and I think this is because of the, the evolvement of society has not yet happened. My mobile phone, I will send it for servicing to the agency, right? Um, anything you want to send your kid to school, you go and find Baijus, you go and find the best tuition classes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you have a sickness, you go to the doctor. When it comes to diet, everyone does self help. What, oh, what's my friend doing? Oh, oh, you did ketogenic diet. I'll also try. Oh, boss, you have to try ketogenic, it's the best. And you find everybody is like my mom is the bop of nutrition. She will come and tell me, you have to do this, you have to do that. I'm like, mom, you're talking to one of the best. You keep quiet, you're my son. You follow what I tell you. So Rishabh is laughing because both of us are dealing with our moms when it comes to nutrition. But at the end of the day, all of us are the nutritionists. So don't try and do self-help techniques. By the way, even Google employees come to Ryan Fernando. And that, that's a fact. Huh? Google has actually paid me for their employees to do their diet plan. So you don't technically Google up your... Uh, your um, solutions try and Ryan, find also them. also important to mention that <clears throat> uh, looking at what people eat what fitness influencers eat on instagram is not really going to help and asking Good people point. just you know give me tell me what to eat tell me what supplement to have over instagram and some people will tell you and that's dangerous uh, i just really <laughs> wanted to bring that out that's a good point you know um, uh, so rishab uh, very few people know this and I have a whole team handling my uh, Instagram and Facebook and everything and all. And I keep telling them, do not give advice. No, sir. Carrot is safe to eat. I'm like, do not give advice. The reason being is that this concept of social media, and I'll ask everyone this question. Is your family doctor on Instagram? Hmm? Think about it. Rishabh. Any of your doctor friends are on Instagram? Why is no doctor on Instagram? Why is no doctor on Facebook giving free advice? The reason being is they're too busy practicing. So all these people who are giving you Instagram, Tushan, Fashan, ye, re, my team came to me. Sir, real banala. Ye kar do, wo kar do. One slap you'll get. 
it's uh, i don't understand i mean yes there's something called entertainment you want to make food as part of entertainment great but influencers unless they are qualified experts unless they're qualified experts these are all my degrees on the wall i have two master degrees uh, qualified at the institute of integrative nutrition in new york currently pursuing an isc diploma in sports nutrition qualification not instagram followers please everyone it's very very important and the simplest thing i can tell you is that you're like a person who's bought a ferrari you are the ferrari and then you're asking your local rickshaw wala fellow to repair your ferrari think about it sorry i'm being so hard hitting okay over here uh green tea works really well if you're not allergic to it i just finished my green tea just now uh we did a research if people had milk and sugar they get 1 kg extra weight gain anybody wants to lose weight in this group 229 people stop milk stop milk and watch yourself lose weight sir dood bahut acha hai calcium milta hai ye milta hai are bhai look at logic in life we have the most number of cattle in the world who owns these cattle some people rishab maybe you have some cows I don't have any cows as yet, but if I buy a cow, one cow gives sixteen liters of milk, boya. Sixteen liters of milk. तुम कितना पिएगा? अरे रिशब तोल रहा. Full lifting on रहा. चलो ठीक है. तीन लीटर पीलो. तेरा बीबी एक लीटर पिएगा. बाकी का क्या करेगा? उसको बेचने का है ना? अबे इसका दूध बेचने का ना marketing plan बनाएगा. दूध अच्छा है. लिख लो बेटा. This is in eighteen hundred. दूध बहुत अच्छा है. बच्चे के लिए बहुत अच्छा है the way milk is being produced today is creating more inflammation in the human body than it ever has because cows naturally give only 4 liters of milk you read up ancient texts and they got 4 to 5 liters of milk a day the cows gave milk only when calves were born today they are being injected which is why all the girl children are getting their puberty before their mothers and before their grandmothers tracking age because of the injections into the cow so it, it affects people and then we continue with this thing that you need to drink milk i could talk about two hours about why you should not be having milk people say calcium ye wo curd yogurt dahi and all that stuff i do on an average around 300 customers personally every year my team does about 6000 customers in totality we look at data we look at inflammation we look at blood test and i can give you as a guarantee give up milk for 3 months in your life check your esr check your c reactive protein check your cholesterol and 3 months later without touching a single dairy product come back to me and ask me whether your blood profile has not improved and also if your fat percentage has not come down apple cider vinegar for those of you who agree with apple cider vinegar maybe a table uh, one uh, one teaspoon or one tablespoon added to your salad i have seen really hurts helps some people get allergy to apple cider vinegar so please don't take it um You know, Adrishab. If anyone wants to um, do a free call with my team of nutritionists, um, you know they can just click a photograph of this. They can fill in a form over yeah. here. Uh, I'll actually, I'll actually put it in your, the chat. Yeah, I'll just put it in the chat. Yeah. Your, Or if uh, if you want, you can just take a screenshot of this slide and yeah, I'll just put it. Touch. I'll just put it in the chat. I'm putting it in the chat box right <clears> now. Yeah. So, if somebody wants to speak to a dietitian on my team, and it's a fifteen-minute free call, in terms of just small basics, and all, no, they're not going to give you a diet chart. Okay, at the end of the day, both Rishab and me do this as a profession. So, um, cult is not a cult. Fit is not a is not a what you call that? It's not an NGO, right? Uh, it's not a it's not a seva organization is there to get people fit ryan fernando is there to get people fit so it's it's part of our it's part of our profession uh to get a uh, why is it not going to to get a uh, a uh, free consult for 15 minutes okay ryan uh, Rishab, you let's, may let's not uh, have you sent it yeah you've sent it Yeah, let's let's get into the um, questions. Let's get into questions, and you decide which questions because we can go on and on. I'm happy. I've 
I've got a free time till lunchtime, but you're the moderator and you're the host. So you tell me when uh, we, we got it. Yeah, let me just uh, take some <clears throat> questions from the chat. Um, one second. Ryan, there's, a, there's one good question that I think will help everybody. It's from Sakshi. Uh, I, used, I used to work out. Uh, uh, I used to work out by having more quantity of homemade carbs and gaining weight, still gaining weight continuously. Hmm. Um, aim is to lose weight. So how to go about it? Uh, so having more carbs, basically, uh, to sustain the workout. Good point. Uh, so it's bio individual over here because Rishab, if you remember when I did yours, uh, we found out that uh, you can have carbohydrates, but higher protein was better for you. Yeah. So uh, certain people can figure this out. But what I would say is that you really don't need to do high carbs or high protein. Uh, the issue in today's world is first, do you need, do you know how much you need to eat calorie wise? Therefore, do you know how much are you burning? So when you know that you're burning X amount, if you eat exactly X calorie or little lesser than X calories, uh, you can do weight, fat loss. And you need energy for the workout. You could add a few complex carbohydrates one hour before the workout. And that would sustain your long-term workout. Uh, if a person's really trying to lose weight during a workout, I would, again, with disclaimer, uh, it's a general statement, but I would like to see your blood test, your liver function, kidney function. I would give five grams of BCA powder, branch chain amino acids, during your workout with a little bit of electrolytes if there's no AC in your gym and you're sweating a lot. A uh, person like me who's skinny, I would do a little bit of glucose, electrolytes and branch chain amino acids, about five grams. This will give you a jhatka in your workout, strength to continue your workout. So Rishabh, I've seen BCA goes to the central fatigue hormone uh, fatigue system and it allows you to push during your workout. Is it really required? I think if you're doing one hour of workout uh, and you sustain one hour of workout 365 days in the year uh, and you have no muscle soreness, you're getting weight loss, you really don't need a supplement. Supplements are a nutritional convenience for people's indiscipline. Uh, and in today's world, everyone wants a supplement because they think it's a magic pill that will give them some extra bounce and all. Not really. Agreed. I think what gives the bounce is, you know, nine hours of sleep. Uh, and the right eating habits. Um, all right, so I'll just take up another. I, I like the, I like this question. Can I take one question yes, from these? Yes, I'm yes. not able to sustain my nutrition once in two weeks. I have a cheat meal. Yes, uh, deep. Let's call it a reward meal, okay? And a signal uh, reward meal, cheat meal. Maybe go off the weight loss radar. So everyone, I want to explain this to you very clearly. Okay, let's do this this way. Uh, one two three. Okay. One, two, three. Can you see that three? Okay. Imagine this is glycogen or glucose in your muscle. Uh, Rishab, you and I hold about 800 grams of glycogen in our muscles. Now, for every one molecule of glycogen, you have three molecules of water bonded to that glycogen. Okay, three molecules. So one glycogen gets three molecules of water. So 800 grams of glycogen, which is the glucose in your muscle, the orange guy, will hold eight into three, 2.4, 2.4 kgs of water. So when you eat a good meal, cheat meal, your weight could go up by 2.4 plus 800, 3.2 kgs. And when you do carb starvation, you lose the glycogen. So water weight goes down. So what happens is people yo-yo in this one to three kg range. Don't be surprised by it. If you gain three kgs weight, don't be anxious. If you lose three kgs weight, don't celebrate. Ask yourself, what's my fat and what's my muscle percentage? 
So I hope I've answered this question because everybody asks me this question. I had a cheat meal. I went for a holiday to Goa. I gained two kgs. It's that month of my menstruation cycle. So I ate a lot of chocolates. I had carb craving during my menstruation cycle. I gained two kg weight, all of this stuff. It's normal for the body to store glycogen. And when you do intermittent fasting, when you do ketogenic diet, when you do low carb diet, your carbs remain so low in the muscle that these three kgs of the water part don't collaborate with the glycogen because it's low. Okay, Kabir has said, I'm practicing low carbohydrate, high fat diet. For the past three months, based on research paper, should I continue? Should I not continue? So, Kabir, ketogenic diet, a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, Atkins diet, any of these diets, I say if you're doing it, do it for three months. Have data before. Uh, everyone, listen in very closely. You need to know your lipid markers, that is, LDL, bad cholesterol, HDL, good cholesterol, VLDL. Uh, you need to know your lipoprotein A, lipoprotein B. You need to know your C-reactive protein. You need to know your homocysteine. These guys are your heart risk markers. Because when you do a high fat diet, you do not want to know if there's a problem. The other thing that I would advise Kabi to do is to do a, a omega three blood test. I do that in my clinic. I take a pinprick. I send it to Norway. I find out your omega three to omega six. Now, Rishabh, why do I want to know an omega three to omega six? By the way, Rishabh, I never did this test. I just acquired it two months ago. Uh, the omega three, you know, every cell membrane has a cell lining. So imagine my finger, this is a cell. Okay. I'm looking inside cell. So my, my hand, my fingers are the cell wall. The cell walls are supposed to be made up of omega three, but in this part of the world, our diets are very high in omega-6 oils. Omega-6 is high inflammation. So when somebody like Kabir does a high-fat diet, the fat is going into him. We don't know whether the fat is creating inflammation. So when you're on a three-month plan, know these seven blood test markers. Know your body fat percentage. Know your muscle percentage. Three months later, test again. If all of your blood parameters are thumbs up, that diet works for you, it's bio-individual, continue. If it's thumbs down, that diet's not working for you. And even if you've got the gains in the fat loss, then use that as short-term diets to shock the body, provided you're tracking your heart rate markers. Anybody above the age of 40, my suggestion when you do a diet, work with a professional nutritionist who understands blood chemistry, because you could get more inflammation, which will lead to more plaque or uh, what do you call as blockages in your arteries. And could that be setting you up for future heart attacks one year later, uh, five years later, 10 years later, because you were stupid enough to just follow something that may not be agreeing bio neutrally with you, but on the internet has had significant data or proof for that population audience. Mm -hmm. So I feel people who are evolved in platforms, like, like anybody who's on a Zoom or an app, you have a certain intellect and you have a certain affordability. So do it correctly. Do it correctly by understanding this data. Rishab, your question that you like. Yeah, so there is a, there's a question around uh, guidelines for moderate social drinking. So a question around alcohol. So it's how does one mod, you know, how does moderate social how do you maintain moderate social drinking while maintaining a healthy eating lifestyle? There are two ways to approach this. One is the absolute clinical precision, which is if somebody's coming in for a film role or going for the Olympics, then alcohol actually affects your workout, Rishabh. So Correct. there's an enzyme called creatine kinase. You do yeah. workout, it releases. So yesterday I did legs. So today creatine kinase has been released. Now I'm very tempted today to have Saturday to have a, uh, a whiskey and a beer with my friend in the evening. But I'm like, I got creatine kinase. It's a 24 hour window. I finished my weight training at seven o'clock. So my creatine kinase will exit by my system by seven o'clock tonight. I can have a drink later. So I may have a drink. Now, when I have a drink, I've worked out and I've lost fat percentage. Now, one beer is going to set me back by 10 grams of fat deposition in my body is what I've calculated. So do I want to drink that one beer and then work out for another 20 minutes or do I want to abstain? So what I tell people is that 
when you are on a journey of fat loss you can't say i am going to be doing um you know it's, you can't say like i'm going to be doing fasting and at the same time when i'm doing my fasting i want to eat because i'm hungry so i'm on a exercise schedule i want to lose fat percentage i'm with rishabh telang i'm with brian fernando i want to lose fat and then i'm going to drink, drink daru some people say no no i can't do absolute like that so i'm then 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 adjust your goal setting marks to have 5 kg weight loss in a year not 5 kg weight loss in a quarter now alcohol uh, i'm a goan i drink uh, i think alcohol is good uh, but probably too small uh, hard liquors and if you're doing a beer one beer because one beer pint size is setting you back but people want to drink four five so that they relax and get lucid and get happy and stuff like that i'm just giving you the science the science is 1 g of alcohol is 7 calories 1 g of carbohydrate is 4 calories 1 g of protein is 4 calories and 1 g of fat is 9 calories so alcohol and fat are much more like brother and sister i repeat alcohol are much more like brother and sister 7 calorie 9 calorie alcohol lati charges the enzyme that comes out of the body when you work out which helps in muscle uh, resynthesis so it it allows you to have that you remember that picture i showed you rishabh of that 70 year old triathlete right so if you're going to be boozing and then uh, trying to build muscle that's not going to happen what i would ad advise anyone if they're not like they love the alcohol so much and they can give it up for 5 6 months build your muscle in 5 6 months abstain and then come back and then have a drink once a week and that once a week you'll see your weight go up by 2 or 3 kg because again alcohol raises your glycogen in your muscle which is why you find a lot of beer drinkers post ultra marathons and stuff like that because they're trying to replenish the carbs back into uh, their their the muscle action levels there's never a right answer with alcohol either you enjoy life or uh, you know you lift up your shirt and show a six pack ab and it's like there's no family pack over here it's just a six pack yeah so there's the answer about about alcohol and i think that's the one very good point was leave it for 5 to 6 months and then maybe in moderation should be okay i should be okay yeah i'm going to do some quick uh, quick uh, rapid fire questions because some amazing questions from your participants mm. okay what about milk why can't we have whey protein uh, yeah. so uh, anju and to everybody else um um if you do the food intolerance test and you're allergic to milk then avoid whey protein but i could be wrong and your body completely digests milk thumbs up so you might want in 2021 to figure out doing a food intolerance test naam ke vaaste just like that you buy expensive shoes you know so uh, i i i love using the five finger shoes okay i i walk around with them so these are expensive shoes uh so why don't you do a blood test are you are wearing an exercise wearable i'm sure rishab if i ask everyone to put on their videos i think 50% of your audience has exercise wearables maybe more i could be wrong right so uh do a food allergy test no no which foods don't agree with you and then uh, you could take away protein or not take away protein somebody asked another question muscle soreness i'm a huge believer of bca branched chain amino acid and glutamine glutamine makes up 60% of your skeletal muscle branched chain amino acids make up 35% of your muscle so these four amino acids leucine isoleucine valine that's bca names and um, glutamine these four banda make up 90% of your muscle so you can add that into your green tea lemonade or you can have it in a water solution or you get pre workouts post workouts and all the biggest problem with supplements is they they put too much of sweetness in it because a lot of yeah. these supplements are really bitter excuse me so we want to we want to work on that very well what food should be avoided to total uh, what food should be totally avoided and what should be included to improve insulin sensitivity and lower cholesterol levels again amit these are these are bio individual but at the top of it i would use uh, organic amla powder 5 grams early morning if you're not allergic to amla it reduces cholesterol the pharmaceutical industry has tried to stifle this data and i have found it out and i'm trying to propagate the use of amla to lower cholesterol ryan you uh, gave it to me also if um, and you remember uh, your cholesterol level just it, boom went down it's it's brilliant uh, yeah? this amla thing in the morning so i am telling doctors why statins 
why aren't you asking people to change the way they eat? Why medicine? My dad, my dad, huh? Rishabh, my sugar is in control. Ganta, dad, your sugar is in control. You're taking seven tablets. This is the way people think because you start with one tablet. My BP is in control. My sugar is in control. Nothing is in control. The tablet is controlling it. So when people tell me uh, uh, tablets are controlling it, doctors are controlling your tablets, I am saying, can you use foods? Now, to improve insulin sensitivity, number one is weight training. Weight training increases insulin sensitivity. Weight training. The second thing, cinnamon. Contains cinnamon aldehyde, which improves insulin sensitivity. It helps in fat burning. There's a herb called Meshi Shringi or Gymnema Silvestra. Meshi Shringi or Gymnema Silvestra. That's a herb that improves insulin sensitivity and reduces food and sugar cravings. Resveratrol, 400 milligrams of resveratrol, which is found in grapes. Ryan Fernando, I can drink wine, no? That's the first thing people ask me when I say resveratrol is found in grapes. No, it's only 400 milligrams of resveratrol extracted from the grape and put into a capsule. It improves insulin sensitivity. Yeah. So Ryan, a question uh, around someone who's working out three to four sessions in a day. Wow. Uh, and after a point, unable to lose weight. Difficult question to answer, Rishabh, because it, I would like to see the track record uh, and what was the muscle, what is the fat. Then I'm unable to lose weight, which means have you lost muscle by overtraining? So let's say you started out at 70 kgs, you lost to 65, you were expecting to lose 5 kgs of fat, but you actually lost 5 kgs of muscle. So at 70, you had a higher volume engine, which consumed more calories. Now at 65, you're consuming uh, far lesser calories because your engine has become so small. Your appetite is dropped, but it's not dropped enough because your engine is really dropped smaller in size. It's like saying, Rishabh, you have a Mercedes. It's a 2000 CC car. It guzzles 20 liters every day. Next thing you know, you have broken down this car and made it to a Maruti 800. You still feel that you have come down from 20 liters of fueling to 12 liters of fueling, but this car only needs four liters of fueling. So it's all about capacity. That's the first observation this person has to do. Second observation, are you working out so much that you're releasing the stressor hormone, mm. which is cortisol? Exactly. Right? So I had this couple who went off to Maldives for nearly 60 days, uh, both husband and wife uh, working in, in very good companies. And they were like, okay, listen, man, if you go to Maldives, we, they, they struck a deal with one of the hotels to live there for 60 days. And they said, uh, okay, this is the expense and all. So they went over there. Now, they didn't have access to a gym, right? So they just snorkeled and walked and ate clean. Because see, over there, there's no Zomato, there's no Swiggy. So you eat breakfast like an Indian from the buffet, which is, oh, yeah, I ate very well then lunch is soda, and then dinner is like soup or something because it's quite expensive. So they were like, okay, let's save money and all stuff. Th that lady was working out twice a day in Bangalore, went to Maldives for 60 days, and for the first time in her entire plan, she lost 4% body fat. So 2%, 2%. Before that, she was not losing. Moral of the story, she was working out so much, she had lesser stress in Maldives, she was on the beach eating smaller, right? Not working out, walking. So she's come back to Bangalore. She's continued walking, doing weight training once a day, walking once a day. So the walking is leisure walking where she's walking and talking to her business associates. And that's part of exercise. Okay. Exactly. So Ryan, uh, a lot of times, you know, this is, that's the problem with, uh, you know, fitness. People think more is better. And in reality, you have to systematically plan it. So people on this call, if I could give you one advice about your exercise, is that don't look at exercise as just exercise. You've got to look at exercise and recovery together. If, you're, if your recovery is not ahead of the pace at which you are damaging your muscles, then it's not going to take you anywhere. So instead of doing working out, focusing on working out three hours a day, just focus on dedicating some time to recovery. In fact, nutrition plays a huge role in your recovery and 
of course your sleep plays a huge role your low intensity movement play a huge role so everything that you know ryan's been talking about uh, for the last one hour or so it all connects together to help you recover faster than you damage your muscles and that's how you get stronger that's how you become a better athlete the new iphone is around 1.3 lakhs i would ask you to divert that money into eating organic food yeah because this iphone cannot be replaced so i'm asking people to divert their frivolous expenditures into phones and gadgets into this gadget trainer mind coach breath food allergy food come to know what does your body need so uh, i'll share a quick uh, thing with you so uh, rishab i had this gentleman his consultant 72 year old he had diabetes toe was he had to get amputated in october i actually made a video of this uh, and it's on my profile so to make a very long story short he came to me and he said ryan fernando uh, so i had handled one of his son who had a liver transplant reversed so he said i want to do the plan with you so i so i do i do everything i said sir what do you do i'm retired but i'm a consultant okay so everyone uh, everyone pays me in advance right so i'm like sir if you don't mind what's your salary it's like uh, i earn about 1 crore a year consulting 72 year old oh you want 1 crore so i wrote down this number okay 1 crore i just wrote it down in my book and i kept it so we started his diet exercise resistance training walking supplements and all so he lost a whopping uh, 14 kg of body fat in 10 months 72 year old huh? his toe was amputated his doctor got gobsmacked because we reversed his diabetes but now he's come to me with a mandate he wants to live till 125 now this is what he told me ryan my body age was his body age was uh, i think 76 or something you're 72 years old his body age came down to 61 so you do 75 to 61 i think that's about 14 years he said mr fernando I earn one crore a year. No, you just gave me fourteen years of my life. You just made me fourteen crores richer. I want everyone to understand this: your body is your earning vehicle. Your body is your life-giving vehicle. Your body is what takes care of your family. If you are not going to invest in this item, whatever else you are investing in life is giving you pseudo pleasure. the real pleasures in your body so learn to eat correctly learn to train correctly learn to sleep correctly you do these three whatever you are earning today at the age of 70 you will be laughing all the way to your bank whilst all your classmates are either one foot in the grave are already dead or spending crores of rupees on their healthcare whilst you are holidaying in disney world with your grandchild and walking 15 kilometers a day because you're the fittest grandfather or grandmother that your society or neighborhood knows about yeah i think uh, let's take last couple of questions um, there was one question that i saw around 5 to 6 meals a day versus 3 meals a day which is better story my wife in the lockdown wanted to do intermittent fasting i said you will not do intermittent fasting it's not good i'm trained in a medical college goa medical college how to understand biochemistry and all and when you do uh, erratic eating patterns uh, there is a change in um, uh, body composition blood sugar and all much to my surprise my wife lost 4 kg of body fat and you have met devika she's small frame so uh, obviously her muscle percentage went up when she lost 4 kg of body fat uh, and that's something amazing from 54 to 50 kg uh, and no muscle loss i on the other hand tried intermittent fasting and i lost muscle so my story to you rishab is that it's case to case basis yeah fasting is not harmful fasting is very beneficial if you are in a high intensity program like yours you might want to first tweak the diet try 3 months with fasting and workout but always women should eat and workout men should fast and workout this is my opinion of construction of data <clears throat> over the years of experience i could be wrong you'll get that one off woman who gets amazing results with fasted cardio uh and uh 
it's better to work with a nutritionist and figure out, let me have my last meal at seven o'clock in the evening. Let me have my first meal at one o'clock. But uh, we have forgotten fasting, uh, Rishabh. I think uh, we need to bring back fasting, you know, in a religion, we have Mondays and Thursdays, Tuesdays, Saturdays. We have forgotten all of that. I think that fasting was physiologically very beneficial in the guise of religion. And I think we need to bring that back, if not for religion, at least for science. Correct. Yeah. Um, I think I'll take one more question, Ryan, and then um, obviously we can put the link. Massive number of questions. Yeah, it's it's a lot of questions. Um, There have been uh, questions around how to improve digestion. And now I, I, I had, I saw some questions before. And now I see one more question right now. So how to, how do you control gastric issues, acid reflux and digestive issues? So if you could just talk a little more about how do you improve digestion? I think okay. that will help a lot of people. Okay. So, so for a, for a lot of people, um, uh, from, from a perspective of, um, uh, digestive issues. Okay. Um, there is a huge problem in today's world because we are not eating organic. Uh, we are not eating organic. And I think there's a lot of insecticides, pesticides going into us, number one. Number two, the f- type of food we are receiving is wrong. Uh, and we are, we are beginning to understand. In the olden days, people would not complain about a bad gut. They'd let it get really bad and then go to a doctor. Today, we are like, oh, online, I can go to the doctor. I'm getting slight pain. Let's get this done and everything. So where am I going with this story? You will have foods that heal and you'll have foods that harm. You have to figure out the foods that harm your body and remove them. How do you figure out the foods that harm your body? Do a food intolerance test. Do a genetic uh, gluten test and lactose test. You'll come to know what you need to eat, what you're not not supposed to eat. If people have ulcers, ulcerative colitis, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, autoimmune disorders of the gut, then they can also do something known as a microbiome test. I do that at my clinic. You can get in touch with me. I just pasted my Facebook page. You can also find me as Ryan Fernando on Google. Uh, and I have, a, I have a website where you can go and uh, figure it out uh, on how to contact me. Uh, there's a contact, Ryan. Uh, I do the microbiome test. Microbiome test is a poop stool analysis. And then we send it to a lab. And that happens to be here in Bangalore City, where Rishabh, you and I are residing. But we do it for across India. Uh, we do it across the world also. The poop sample comes in and they fingerprint the DNA of the poop. And then they tell these bacteria are high, these bacteria are low. You should eat these foods, you should not eat these foods. And then change the nutrition according to that. But as a general tip to everybody, organic is what I suggest. All your rice, all your roti, all your pulses, all your dals, go organic. Your milk, organic, if you're having milk. Your vegetables and fruits, go organic. Now people come back to me and say, but how do I know it's organic? So I'll give you a similar example. There is a no entry sign on the road. No entry sign on the road. In, the, in our country, what happened? Police police Amir Khan's latest ad, no? Um, no entry And then he goes into that. Justin when the mindset says that when nothing is checking up on me, I don't know whether my organic is good or not. But I have a simple way of knowing whenever i buy organic fruits they spoil much faster pomegranate normal last three months in your kitchen without getting a single kida and if you come to my house rishab you'll always find fruit flies in my kitchen those tiny guys you go to anybody else's house you very rarely find fruit flies because in organic fruits and vegetables you will get more fruit flies so for me, that's like that day, my son, sir, this watermelon is in the water. Which kind watermelon do you take? Go to the good shop. And then I buy a watermelon from the dukan, which is not organic. And you keep that watermelon for 7, 10, 15, 20 days. It doesn't get spoiled. So organic is my, is my sincere suggestion to everybody. Uh, very helpful and very, very insightful. Thank you so much for also putting time in creating that presentation and making it so simple to understand nutrition as I understand is a very deep and a very difficult topic and the way you explain the kind of examples you gave just made it 
uh, really easy for people to relate. Uh, again, thank you so much uh, for your time and thanks so much for um, everything that you do to make to make health easy and to make health better. Thanks, Mr. for having me. I'll see you soon. Hopefully, uh, we share a cup of green tea soon. We will definitely. We should catch up soon. It's been a while. It's been a while. Take care, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. God bless everyone. Thank you for attending today.